How do I get divorced? If you want to know more about how you get divorced in England and Wales, then this is the vlog for you. Hi, I'm Caitlin Jenkins and this is the Family Law Vlog. One of the questions that I'm most frequently asked as a family lawyer is how you actually go about getting divorced. Now what I'm going to talk about today is the law in England and Wales, so if you're concerned about getting divorced in another jurisdiction, then that's a matter for separate advice or a different vlog. If you're thinking about getting divorced, then the first tip that you need to bear in mind is that to get divorced you need to have been married a year, as there's a bar in English law on people getting divorced in the first year of marriage. Provided you've been married a year, then the only ground for a divorce is that the marriage has broken down irretrievably. If you have come to the conclusion that, unfortunately, your marriage is at an end and there is no future for it, then you can divorce, provided that you can prove one of what are called the five facts. The first is adultery, so whether one person has committed adultery with another person and they find it intolerable to live together. The second is unreasonable behaviour, so one person has behaved so unreasonably that the other person can't be expected to live with them. The third is desertion, but that's an extremely rare ground these days, and so it's not one that you should necessarily think you can rely on. You'd probably need some specialist advice on that one if you're thinking of using that. The fourth is that both of you have lived separately for two years and the other person consents to the divorce being brought, so two years in consent. And the final fact is five years separation. So if you've been separated for five years, even if your spouse doesn't agree to the divorce, then you're likely to be able to get a divorce. If you and your spouse have agreed that, unfortunately, there needs to be a divorce, then the best thing to try and do would be to try and agree between you the mechanics of the divorce, so which of those facts you're going to use, because that will minimise the difficulties between you and the ac any acrimony between you. Sometimes people are able to do that direct, sometimes they use a mediator or a counsellor, and sometimes they use a solicitor to try and do so. The next question that I'm often asked is whether it matters what fact is used. Well, the broad answer to that is no. In general terms, it doesn't matter if the divorce comes about on the basis of adultery or unreasonable behaviour or two-year separation. Just because somebody's on the receiving end of an adultery petition or a behaviour petition, it doesn't mean that they're going to get any less money in any financial discussions or their child is going to spend any less time with them and vice versa. There are some cost implications potentially if you're on the receiving end of an unreasonable behaviour petition or an adultery petition and that's something you should probably take some advice from a solicitor on but in broad terms the way that people actually get divorced and the fact that it's used is often a means to an end. It's a, a way of achieving a divorce that both people have agreed they want to happen rather than it being a, a negotiating position or some sort of bargaining chip that means that somebody's going to get more in the finances or spend less time with their children. So the next question really is, well, if you've decided how the divorce is going to happen and which fact you're going to use, how does the divorce process actually take place? That's the subject of a separate vlog on the actual divorce process itself. But in overview, if people have agreed how they're going to get divorced and they've agreed the fact of the divorce, then people can manage that process themselves. It's broadly a paper exercise through the courts. There is an online facility now for clients who don't have solicitors of their own to be able to do the divorce process themselves. Depending on where you are in the country, it can take between three and five months to go through a divorce process, sometimes longer, say four to six months, if it's all agreed and people are sending in the paperwork at the right moment. Often, of course, there are linked questions about the arrangements for children and on finances. And before starting a divorce process, that's something you should also think about. That's the subject of separate vlogs. As always with the Family Law Vlog, if you want further advice or information, you should take some specialist advice on your own circumstances and the contact details for contacting me or other colleagues in the Mills and Reeve family team are at the end of this vlog.